So now we're going to switch gears here, and we're going to we're going to start talking about ArcGIS Desktop. And uh, qu quite literally, we've spent hundreds of man years uh, working on ArcGIS 10 as a system, but a huge and significant portion has been on desktop. Uh, there are so many enhancements. We've, we've given the entire application a new look and feel, enabled many, many capabilities. And I'd like to introduce you and Cameron, who's a senior development with uh, the engine team and desktop team and the architecture team, to give us a tour of the desktop. Ewan, take it away. Thanks, Jim. As Jim said, the desktop at 10 has a lot of new improvements. We, it's really a major release. It's not only a major release for end users, it's a huge release for developers. There's a lot of new capabilities, feature functions that you'd expect in a release. There's also a lot of ways to get your job done differently, more efficiently, more streamlined. And that's the case for end users as well as uh, you as developers. We've made several changes to the application platform. We've modernized the framework. There is now very nice dockable window uh, interaction. We've replaced all of the icons inside the application. That accounts to over 3,500 new icons that are available to you as developers as part of the SDK. So when you build your solutions, you can integrate it into our platform in a seamless way. We've got a new extensibility framework for working with the desktop applications that we refer to as desktop add-ins. And you'll see that demonstrated shortly. And we've got better enhanced scripting support. What I'd like to do now is really pass over to a demonstration from John Calkins, who's going to take us on a whistle-stop tour for about 13 minutes or so through some of these new enhancements. And he's not going to do it by just hitting off first enhancement, second enhancement. He's going to do it by actually using the software, what we all do every day. So John. Thanks, Ewan. Here's an idea. What if I could give each and every one of you an extra week of vacation a year? A week to travel the world, a week to read a book, spend time with your family, or maybe even write some new code with ArcGIS. <laughs> so, how do we do that? Well, the answer is simple, 72 seconds. 72 seconds per hour times eight hours a day times 250 workdays a year adds up to 40 hours of productivity gains that we could save. So where do we find this magical 72 seconds? Well, the answer is easy. It's from the map. The map of my mouse tracks for the last 24 hours. The miles that my mouse traveled, where I stopped, where I clicked, where I hovered, where I rested. Think of this as a logistics problem. If we could optimize those routes, we could save our 72 seconds. So th this leads us to the question, how does ArcGIS 10 optimize and streamline workflows, help us do our job faster, and solve the problems that we need to solve? So what we need to do this demonstration is a problem. The problem is this. We're going to have a public policy debate for Yosemite National Park. I'm going to ask you to decide, do you want to keep the park as undisturbed wilderness, or do you want to allow us to put in cell phone towers so our cell phones work? The reason we want to do that is to provide increased public safety and reduce the number of search and rescue operations that happens each and every year in the park. So it's a very tough question, and I just want you to think about that as we explore the data and explore the analysis. So we're going to get started by turning on and looking at where do they have search and rescue operations throughout the park. Last year, 220 search and rescues. Now, one of the first things you'll notice with ArcGIS 10 is that windows can come and go. They can slide in, they can slide out. It looks really cool. It's really nice. It makes more space for your map. So you have more real estate for your map. But most importantly, the map doesn't redraw every time you do it. So that simple fact is going to save us our first few seconds and add up to 72 by the time we're done. We can also choose to go ahead and pin that open. It makes it a little easier for you to follow along with the legend. But let's go back to our problem. Let's think about what else is happening in the park on a yearly basis. There's more than 5 million visitors that come to the park every year through these main entrances. There's more than 13,000 law enforcement incidents throughout the park. They have wildfires, they have prescribed burns, and they have those more than 220 search and rescues. Now, if I were to ask you what pattern do you see on this map, do some pattern analysis. It's going to be a little bit difficult because you have so much data through time. You heard a little bit about it earlier this morning about how ArcGIS is time aware. 
All of these layers have a time property set, so it's very easy to just open up the system clock, set that to the month of March, and now we can start to see what's really happening in the park. In the month of March, everything's pretty much concentrated in Yosemite Valley. Things stay the same through April, but in May, the road to Tioga Pass opens up to the east, and you start to see that fire season has begun as well. As you continue June, things continue to grow and expand, and by July we're in the peak of the visitor season, and you can see not only lots of incidents, wildfires, but we also have dozens and dozens of search and rescue operations throughout the park, almost on a daily basis. So if we could start to provide better safety, maybe we can affect this problem. Well, let's go in and look at this data another way. One of the things that the chief ranger asked is said, "Well, could we review our search and rescue operations for last year? Could we replay those events?" When he said the word replay, all of a sudden that triggered the thought, "Well, could we script that? Could we automate that replaying process?" So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Python window. We've often used Python to automate common tasks, workflows. Well, we're going to go ahead and load up a Python script, and this is going to allow us to create a new search index. It's actually going to allow us to create the search indexes that were used on these search and rescues. You can look at the Python code. You can see all of the things that make Python more productive as a scripting language: the IntelliSense prompting, the help on the parameters. But let's just go ahead and execute this. And what we want to do is now generate those search and rescue grids. So you're going to see we use Python for geoprocessing, which is something we've been doing for quite a while now. But it's a little bit more at ArcGIS 10. Python is pervasive across the platform, so we can use Python for map automation. I want to go in and I want to review each one of those search and rescues, display different information, navigate the map to that location. So now we're using Python for map automation as well as geoprocessing. So just think about how many seconds that's going to save as we try to replay these events, discuss how we could do things better. Well, let's go back to our main search window and do a little more.